Erin Schumann, director at the Max Planck Institute for Brain Research in Frankfurt. Her work focuses on a particular kind of cell, the neuron. Billions of these versatile nerve cells manage all of our senses and among other things, enable us to watch this film. Neurons are probably the most interesting cell you can find in the body. They underlie everything that the brain does. So everything we do as humans, as animals, perceiving the environment, reflecting on the environment, and reacting to the environment, this is all done by our brain. And neurons are the principal cells in the brain. What makes them particularly interesting is that their shape is suited to interconnecting with each other. That's what's so fascinating about them. Every neuron is equipped with long extensions, dendrites and axons, for receiving and sending stimuli. Essential for this kind of communication are the synapses. Erin Schumann and her team were able to show that the synapse is where many proteins are formed, which are essential for those nerve cells to function properly. Neurons were long thought to produce their proteins centrally in the cell body. That nerve cells are capable of producing proteins locally at the synapses, that is new ground, broken by Erin Schumann and a milestone in brain research. In addition to such discoveries, the team are also pioneering methodologies in the lab. They grow nerve cells in special microfluidic chambers. This allows the researchers to study the nerve processes independently of the cell body. Thanks to these small chambers, the role of proteins can now be visualized outside a brain. Special dyes make the microscopic components of our perception visible. Here in green, nerve processes of neurons grown in the lab. This clever method makes deeper insights possible. If we look in the brain, we of course see a mix of cell bodies and dendrites and axons. And in these microfluidic chambers, what we're able to do is force the neuron to send its axons and dendrites in a linear array so that they're lined up perfect for us to visualize exactly what's going on in the dendrites and the axons. Ingenious inventions like the microfluidics chamber improve basic research on nerve cell function, but they also help investigate diseases in which synapses play a big role. The connection from one neuron to another is particularly sensitive and susceptible to damage. Genetic defects can cause synapses to malfunction. There's a surprising amount of convergence that many of these diseases appear to have synaptic dysfunctions that are apparent. So synapses aren't working well in the brain. There could be too many synapses, too few, or the production of the all-important proteins is disrupted. And this is exactly what we study. So we think that the methods we have developed, if we look at disease models, can give us a very clear picture of what's wrong with these synapses in disease states. Mice are used as model organisms substituting for humans. Sick and healthy individuals are compared to find out what causes certain diseases. This is the very first step towards developing potential treatments. The brains of mice with genetic defects, such as Fragile X syndrome or Huntingdon's chorea, show significant differences. Erin Schumann and her team want to understand how the synapses are affected. Apparently, the protein synthesis of neurons differs depending on where they're located in the brain. This calls for even more high-tech methodology. It's very important to be able to resolve and identify the synaptic proteins at a particular cell type. And that's a method that we've developed in the lab now where we can purify synapses from a certain cell type in a certain brain area and therefore have a very um, refined view of what could be going on in these disease states. 
being able to look inside a mouse's brain, visualizing neurons and analyzing proteins may one day lead to help for patients who suffer from synaptic dysfunction inside their brains. In order to reach this far off goal, the mice's brains are dissected and the proteins within carefully analyzed. Using their highly specialized lab techniques, the team are able to isolate proteins of specific kinds of synapses for further study. These proteins appear to be basic elements of our perception, involved in learning and in the storage of memories. But these structures are very short-lived, which raises important questions for the researchers. The average protein that we study, half of its lifetime is over within five days, and yet we know memories can last a lifetime. So the question that really drives us is how can we understand a system that gives rise to something stable but is built from unstable parts, the proteins? The team at the Max Planck Institute have found an ingenious way to study the ephemeral proteins. They don't only look at the proteins, but also at the mRNA, which is the molecular blueprint for any given protein. Schumann's team have come up with dozens of innovative ways to study the brain. Their methods have already led to new insights that may one day be of great use to patients. Right now, we're on the cusp technologically of being able to see things in cells in ways that we never have been in the past. Being able to visualize them near synapses and I think the next five, ten years are going to be super exciting and really illuminating for us to understand how these processes work. Erin Schumann is paving the way to the fascinating world of neurobiology and a better understanding of how our nerve cells function.